Hey everyone! In this video I show you how I paint a portrait of myself standing in my little studio garden. And as always, you can find the entire list of materials and links where to purchase them down in the video description. I always wanted to paint a portrait of myself where I am in front of flowers or wearing a gorgeous dress, something very baroque-like or even rococo-like. But recently I bought this beautiful flowery summer dress and the moment I bought it I knew I had to paint it because it is so beautiful and pretty and I just really like dresses and oftentimes I don't have the opportunity to wear them that often so on a painting at least I can wear that and wearing that dress also just reflects a part of myself because I really like to be surrounded with beautiful flowers because they just make me really happy. For example on my balcony I have always a lot of flowers and in the summertime of course there are flowers everywhere. Since I'm very lucky to be able to take care of this little garden, I thought I really just have to incorporate it in my art too, because it's so important to me. I look at it every day. And now where a lot of those flowers are blooming, it was the best time to take a couple of pictures. In the background you can see some hydrangeas and roses. I have a lot of roses in my garden, but most of them are just pink and yellow. I don't have any fancy ones, but I love them nevertheless. I took a series of photos with the remote camera app that I have installed on my phone, which is super helpful if you want to take photos of yourself. And I hid it on the little bag that I'm carrying there. After I took a couple of photos, I edited them a bit in Photoshop and just put a little bit more flowers in the composition because they kind of didn't fit in on the format. So I just added the flowers on the left side and I also took a head from one photo and put it on the body of another photo. <laughs> As always, I Frankenstein a composition, but it's pretty much true to the original photo. Also, what I absolutely adored was that the light of the plants reflected on my skin and the result was this beautiful yellow glow, which just gave everything this magical shimmer. I really loved that. <laughs> After having reviewed the photos on my laptop, I just had no idea how I could turn that into a painting and I was thinking which medium would fit and what would look best and I think oils would be amazing but then I had to paint a really giant painting out of it because there are so many details and I would have wanted to include everything in the painting so that would have been just too much work <laughs> because this painting will be available at the upcoming Bad Apple Artist Collective auction this night so I had to choose a medium in which I could paint a painting in a possible time frame. So I decided to go with watercolors and gouache and I painted on the Fabriano hot pressed watercolor block and I just used the complete block. I just had to tape down the block and then trace my reference photo onto the watercolor paper. I just printed it out like I do it with all my other or with most of my other paintings too. I didn't have any expectations whatsoever how the painting would look like. In many of my watercolor paintings I oftentimes overwork my piece I try to paint it like the reference photo and when it doesn't look like it, I try to overwork it and make it fit and I force my painting to look like the reference photo and then in the end just loses all its freshness and lightness of the watercolor. But after having done a couple of watercolor pieces, <laughs> I finally managed to control myself and let the watercolor live. I started this piece with no expectations whatsoever. Real quick before we continue, if you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and real-time lessons available for you on my Patreon site, in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. On top of that, all videos are downloadable and you can keep them forever. For just $5 a month you get instant access to over 70 painting videos. That's pretty neat, right? And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of underrated but even longer real-time 
time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them, then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. And for the extra portion of art, you might even fancy the art surprise tier. For only $5 more, I send you a beautiful set of three unique art gifts each month. I chose the best artworks and illustrations that I created and turned them into beautiful magnets, stickers and postcards, which are not only wonderful decorations for your home, but also are rare collectibles, because once I send them out, they won't be available anywhere else and I don't reprint them. So get your art surprises package this month. So what are you waiting for? Up your painting game and join me now on patreon.com slash I use the Como Revi watercolors from Mozart because they are so useful actually. The neon colors are amazing. I did have a slight problem with the watercolor palette though. I can't close it anymore because the colors tend to stick at the paper that is glued in the top of the lid and whenever I close and open them, all the watercolors are stuck to the paper and when I want to remove them, a huge portion of watercolors just remains on the paper so I just can't close this watercolor palette anymore <laughs> but I can probably solve that problem by removing the paper but I don't mind I, I don't have to close the lid anymore I will just continue painting with this palette open <laughs> so <laughs> that works for me I began the painting with the face portion as you can see it is super small and very tiny actually because I really wanted to fit the whole composition on this format so I was was very worried that I could fit it in and in the case I wouldn't be able to paint the face I would immediately stop continuing on the painting and start something new. So the best way here was to start the face and see if I can make it work and then continue working on the rest. After having added a couple of layers of watercolor in the face portion I switched to color pencils but then soon realized that they were too rough actually and the texture would be too extreme for this tiny face so i switched to my favorite medium as an addition to watercolor which is gouache and i chose the 60 gouache paints from Arteza. Seriously guys, I cannot recommend them more to you. The white isn't that amazing, but if you switch out the white but use all the other colors, it is the best addition to watercolors because with watercolors you probably make a couple of mistakes here and there and gouache is so perfect to get rid of some mistakes. Just don't try to blend with them. Just accept that you can't blend very well with gouache paints, but you don't need it either. When you look at the face, there are no blending in the face but it still looks good because I just paid attention to the color values and I just put them mosaic like next to each other or like a puzzle or a patchwork blanket. You don't need blendings in every piece of art. So gouache is perfect, I love it. It takes a little bit of practice and I can recommend using oil paint brushes when working with gouache because gouache is pretty thick and the soft watercolor brushes don't really spread the paint that evenly as a stiffer oil paint brush would do. Now for such a complicated composition I work from the lightest areas to the darkest ones so I naturally started with the whites and the very light pink tones of the roses and I just added them everywhere on the composition in the background and on the pattern of the dress without thinking too much about rendering them realistically. I just wanted to have the colors down first since I really like those watercolor effects I intentionally didn't render them very accurately. I just wanted to make beautiful blobs of colors. Then I continued working a little bit on the skin and the hair portion and here again the neon colors came in extremely handy. So I used neon yellow and neon green and mixed them together to make this poisonous green color that I could find on the skin and in the hair portion. Since uh, the plants were emitting so much green light, there were a lot of green in the figure. And I was so excited that I could render this bright and beautiful green and apparently it was in the hair portion, around the arms, in the face and on the neck. So I just added it where I could find it. If my skin is green on the reference photo, then I will paint that on the painting too. If 
even though it is very unusual. So when painting hair with watercolors, I stick to being very loose and try to make it look fresh as well. I know these terms are kind of very general, but I don't know how to say it differently. So first I try to get the largest hair strands down and the largest portions of colors. For example, here in the painting, my hair starts very light at the tips and then it gets a little bit darker and orangey brown and then at the roots it is dark again. So I try to get those colors down first and then I added some larger hair strands. And and then I continued with filling in the rest of the painting. When I start my watercolor painting with no expectations, I try to work on each part of the painting evenly. What I did is that I continued then on the plants in the background and I admit they were pretty overwhelming because there were so many leaves and plant stems and blossoms. I just, I, I just couldn't distinguish most of it. So I started with the largest leaves and stems and just parts of plants that I could distinguish from the background and then I just slowly filled out the wide area around the figure and I try to make nice brush strokes because these areas I wouldn't render them very accurately they would look definitely more loose so here it was more important to make beautiful brush strokes than rendering it realistically the way of realism that i applied here was only through color values so i didn't try to get all the details right instead i concentrated only on the color values and the colors and of course the proportions due to the traced reference photo and this way i also filled out the dress so the dress is relatively dark instead of a dark blue or a almost black i mixed a little bit lighter blue and just loosely filled in the dress and filled in all the folds and here again i stayed pretty loose and then i continued with the plant pot with the hydrangea that is next to me and i really like it because it is such a classic motif almost something that you would maybe find on old watercolor paintings maybe 30 years ago or something it is like absolutely not modern it's almost classic i wanted to paint it very loosely to really keep this almost like old-fashioned look and here again i used those very bright purple tones from the kumuribi watercolor palette and then i didn't really do a lot with the hydrangea flowers. I did not paint single flowers or flower blossoms or single leaves. I just very loosely indicated that there is a flower and also a planting pot. Now if you look at the right bottom of the painting next to the figure in the grass portion, I let a lot of white gaps there. And the reason for that is that there were a lot of flower petals that fell off the rose blossoms and they landed on the grass. And I wanted to capture that in the painting too. It was very hard because it is easier to paint individual leaves or flower petals on top of something but painting them in a shape of a gap of the paper is very difficult so i'm not sure if that comes across but since everything is loose i didn't mind if it wasn't captured that accurately after having filled in the entire composition i decided to give some of the rose blossom a couple more details i know that when i fill in everything it won't look good i know that because i made a lot of uncomfortable experience where i ruined my artworks because i thought i had to work out every single detail and then in the end i ruined it and it looked the best in the beginning of the painting process so here i learned from my mistakes and I only added details to some flower blossoms. I intentionally let the flower blossoms in the top of the painting be completely loose and I only added a couple of details to some of the rose blossoms in the middle of the painting next to the figure. Because the hydrangea also looked good, I didn't touch it. I tried to touch it and add a couple of details and it immediately looked worse, so I just let it how it looked in the beginning. And then after having filled in the entire painting, there was only one thing to do and it was to check the color values. I added a lot of major changes in the end. For example, I added a dark 
dark tint next to the figure and I added even tints on top of the flower blossoms because they had to be darker they were in the shades. I would never do that naturally but I compared the photo to my painting and I knew that I had to do that. And those bold moves it changed the painting a lot and it looked more natural and realistic in the end even though I didn't add any details. It was just because the color values matched the reference photo a bit better than in the beginning. And in the very end I added tons of splashes to finish the painting. This was one of my favorite parts as well, especially those neon pink. Like I said, the painting looks very classical and maybe even a little bit old-fashioned and I wanted to merge those old-fashioned style with something modern and since I like splashes so much, I completely got crazy and wild and added so many splashes here. I used all the neon colors and blacks. Those sprinkles of colors remind me of graffiti and murals and I think like this kind of art is so different than the realism that I would normally do that this little effect of the splatters just fits so perfectly and balances out maybe the not so modern part of my painting. So it was perfect. <laughs> I love it. Of course I covered the parts of my painting that I didn't want to have splashes on, like the face portion obviously. Then I called it finished. I'm just really so happy how the painting turned out and also that it was bold enough to finally paint this kind of painting because it had so many details and I didn't know how to do it. But it's really the best way to have no expectations whatsoever. So Whenever you think you can't do a painting, it is too complicated, just don't go in with an expectation. You can do the painting without painting the details, you can just paint the overall shapes. And this way you will be surprised of the end result. And whenever I do that, I'm happy with the painting. I also found a fitting title for the painting. I called it Flowery Sanctuary, which of course means that the garden is a place for me which I find most relaxing and where I am very calm and very happy. If you like to give this painting a home I will have all the information about the auction down in the video description. It goes until the end of the month so after that you can't get the painting anymore so if you're interested head over to the video description and for those of you who want to see how I did all the details in real time and maybe want to recreate this painting or parts of the painting maybe you want to know how I paint the face or maybe the hydrangea or something else of the painting just go to my patreon page and join me at the ten dollars we bought here I have the complete process of the painting which is eight hours long for you available as a real-time video and as you can see you can observe the mixing process as well. So this way you will be able to just follow along with me and maybe do a painting inspired by mine. I hope you liked this video and you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye!